So here we have the training fundamentals part of this video series. And we are starting with the fact that you should follow foundational principles always. So whilst it's tempting to follow like the latest social media trend or do something that looks really cool before you're ready, most of the time this isn't going to get you what you want. You know, so in a sea of influencers and athletes and amazing people online, one thing remains true is that there are only a few professional athletes who actually get paid for what they do and they get paid through sponsorships. Okay, so that's one way in which a professional athlete can make money. The second way, and this goes for the fitness community mostly, is to become an influencer. So if you wanna just train all day and make money based on your own physique and your own training capacity, you become an influencer. And what that means is you have to do something ridiculous in order to stand out because there are so many of them. You know, especially in the male world, there's definitely a whole heap of fantastic athletes, but now in the female world, we have almost just as many. You know, and these are the most ridiculous physiques you've ever seen. You know, with really great athletic capacity, maybe they used to be a gymnast or maybe they used to be a track athlete or maybe they just have ridiculously good genetics and they've joined the gym. Now their physiques are out of this world. They may have won a title or two and now you think that what they're doing is what you should do. So let me tell you that nine times out of ten what they're doing and their success is really comes down to their foundational principles that they laid down in the beginning. That of course plus their genetics. But then the problem comes when they're trying to get followers. So they start to say that they did some otherworldly thing to get this result. So you'll see someone with great glutes and she'll tell you something like, all I did was these eight exercises where I'm like lying on my side with my right arm attached over my head and my left leg in the air and... You know, I'm doing that on the Smith machine, which is designed for something completely different. So you see that a lot and it doesn't really mean anything. So if you're a professional bikini athlete, yes, your training matters. Absolutely. But you have to have that glute shape to start with. You know, you can't have tiny little glutes and huge shoulders and then suddenly turn into a huge gluted bikini model because that's not how the body works. You know, the body has no necessity for creating a glute that is six inches thicker than it was when you started. You know, what, it, what would be the, the point of that, right? So they would hit their genetic ceiling at probably like an inch of growth. So it's important to understand that these people post crazy things, not because it's what made them successful, but because it helps them sell their program. You know, because if they told you, all I do is chest press, side raise and bicep curl, and then I squat and do a leg press, you probably wouldn't click, you probably wouldn't buy it because you don't think they've got anything new to share, you know, and they don't. You know, and this is not to put them down, it's just to make it really obvious to you that they don't necessarily know what they're talking about as far as the everyday person is concerned. They're just trying to sell programs. So if you hire a reputable, popular coach, unless they're like, again, an influencer coach, you're probably not going to get anything like that in your program. It's probably going to look kind of boring. So it's gonna be like squatting, deadlifting, leg pressing, lunging, maybe hip thrusting, leg curls and calf raises, you know, something like that. And your objective will be to improve on that over time, you know, maybe a 12 week program. And then at the end of that 12 week program, you'll have a slightly harder program handed to you and you will repeat the same cycle again. Okay, so the training is monotonous, repetitive, it can be boring. Okay, but your goal might be to get the leg press from 80 kilos at the start of the 12 week program to 105 kilos at the end of the 12 week program. Now you've excelled at that exercise, you've gained 25 kilos in weight on the exercise and you might have put on some muscle. And because you are stronger, it is guaranteed that you have put on muscle. So that's how that works. And the basics work the best every time. And the number one thing that makes a good program is that it's focused on the posterior chain. So this is a group of muscles that runs down the back of the body, including the deeper abdominal muscles, the back hamstrings and the glutes. If you don't strengthen these muscles, then your posture will not be aligned enough that the results will come. If you do something like a lunge and it hurts your knees, or you do something like a squat and it hurts your back or a deadlift that hurts your back, you don't have a strong posterior chain and you're not able to get in the position that is required to perform that exercise correctly. So your program would actually be built around building those foundational muscles so that you can perform them correctly. And that might take you six months. So really often, there's something I really commonly get in my business is someone will start training and they'll say, my ultimate goal is to be able to do a chin up. And I'll say like, why is that? And they'll just go, oh, it's, you know, it's just really cool. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, a chin up for most people is probably three to five years away if they haven't really trained before. So, and if somebody's been training poorly for a long time, it's probably about the exact same amount of time away because something like a chin up requires excessive upper body strength and posterior chain strength. So what I would do with something like that is first of all, tell them they're not doing any chin ups. So I'm not gonna be putting any chin ups in their program. 
I'm just going to be teaching them how to squat, how to deadlift, how to build the posterior chain. They're going to be doing this kind of movement for the lats through like, you know, straight arm lat pull down, seated rows, standard lat pull down, single arm pull downs, and maybe assisted chin ups with the machine, but they're not going to be doing any chin ups. You know, and you don't actually have to do a chin up in order to get good at a chin up. You just have to get a strong body overall. And the same applies for push ups. A lot of girls say they want to be able to do push ups. I never put them in the program. 12 months later, they're doing push ups. Why? Because their whole body is stronger. You know, so an influencer will tell you to do a single leg pistol squat with your arm behind your head and maybe some hip training and some box jumps and, and some stair sprints and some burpees. You know, whereas a good coach will know that most of those activities will probably give you an injury. Okay, so that's the difference between like an influencer and a professional. So all those fancy exercises, they add really no value to a woman's physique or her life in general. Okay, they just add extra stress and to be honest, they actually make it harder for you to build a posterior chain because you're doing these crazy exercises on weak foundations. Okay, so you actually just exacerbate the problem that you have in the first place. So a good coach will teach you how to master the basics and pace yourself well. I'll ask you to stick to a program for eight weeks or more. So this gives you time to learn the exercises, lay the foundations and start building strength upon that. They will make sure that you understand that the only way to become strong is to be consistent and they won't let you squat, deadlift, chin up, push up or anything like that until you are ready. You know, so as a coach, me personally, I risk losing clients because I don't always give them what they want because what they want has come from Instagram. And what is on Instagram is unfortunately Fortunately, not exactly what gets you results. You know, so do you want Instagram or do you want results? You no, know, no. Once I explain to people why that path might not be beneficial and how this other path might be better for what they want, you know, nine times out of 10, they're happy with that and there's no problem. A good thing to understand that's a professional like myself with heaps of experience, I'm constantly dispelling this stuff. Like this is one of the biggest things I do in my business that I did not have to do five years ago. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't follow influencers because they are amazing. You know, some of them have really great athletic capacity. Some of them are really amazing to watch. They look amazing. They perform amazing. They achieve great things. You know, what they do is cool to watch, but you know, it's important to understand that as full-time athletes or full-time influencers, this is all they do. You know, and they're also born genetically elite. So these people that thrive like this, they were born that way. And you know, hate to break it to you, but you, know, you probably can't get there. I can't get there on half the exercises because I just don't have the body structure, you know, or I just don't have the, the right leverage or the right ratios. This is just how this works. It's like how CrossFitters perform well because they've got really thick upper bodies and really thick waists. This is genetic. You know, they don't build that from CrossFit. They have that. That's why they're good at CrossFit. Just like a power lifter, for example, with a few exceptions, most of them are quite stocky and this is because their leverage is really good and they're kind of lower to the ground and more compact which means that's easier for them to lift heavier weight you know someone who's long and lanky there are a couple of exceptions by the way that you will see someone who will not believe how strong they are you know but these are what you call outliers you know but those people are good at powerlifting because they have the physique for it somebody who thrives in say bikini they thrive because they're good at it naturally they naturally have a tiny waist they naturally have quite a big pelvis they naturally have big round glutes they naturally have broad shoulders. So all of these things are already inherent in them before they even put their foot out into the ring. You know, so follow them, yes, but do not measure your progress against them. And unless they've got lots of clients that get lots of really fantastic results who, you know, as good as them or better than them or, you know, the same or achieving the same great things as them, they might not be a good coach. They're probably a really good athlete, maybe not a very good coach. You know, and then just understanding, especially down the physique path, these women with crazy physiques who just post picture after picture after picture of their own ridiculous physique, most of that, it's just to funnel you into their website to then download their app and sign up to their eight week challenge or something like that. But they might have a thousand people enter that challenge, five people get good results, those five people end up on their Instagram and you start to think that they're a coach, but they're not. You know, no app is considered coaching because, you know, I could have 10 women all weighing 60 kilos and they all have different caloric requirements and they all have different weaknesses and they all have different needs. Okay, so there's a big difference between an influencer and a coach. So always get your advice for your own self, especially if you're a you know normal person who seeks to get the most out of her training, get that from a coach, not an influencer. And I can also you know further comment on that as far as being a coach for as long as I've been a coach for, I've probably trained like a thousand different women and some of the least disciplined clients I've had over the years actually had the best physiques. And some of the most disciplined clients I've had over the years have had some of the least good physiques. 
you know, and I'm just talking if you actually just looked at the two side to side, you choose one over the other and you would think that, you know, this one who looks completely athletic, lean and amazing, you would assume she's way more disciplined than the other one, when it's not even the case. So, you know, genetics play a very large role in what you can get out of your training. You know, me personally, I have the healthiest diet out of everyone I know. And I do not have the leanest physique out of everyone I know. I don't have the biggest glutes. I don't have wide shoulders. It's not my genetics. I don't have a tiny waist. Also not my genetics. Got really long arms and legs and a short torso, which is good for almost no exercise. And, you know, so I've had to learn all the hard way. I had to fix all these problems to get any results at all. So we're not all built the same. We don't all have the same potential. And for an everyday person, you need to understand this. So with all that information in your head, what do you do? You hire a professional that will teach you the fundamentals and match a program to you directly. Most of this program should involve your posterior chain, getting that strong, and you should be focusing on mastering basic exercises and progressive overload over time. You also need lots of rest and not too much cardio if weight training is your focus. So, so first of all, hire a coach. Do not buy something off an influencer. Second of all, get a proper program. It should be built around building your posterior chain. Thirdly, focus on progressive overload. Fourthly, do the program for enough time that you can get strong at each exercise. And fifth, lots of rest, lots of consistency, lots of patience. Just keep doing the fundamentals and you will get there. So that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.